Lately, I've been thinking about something that's been weighing on a lot of people's minds. It's this feeling that we have, this sense of something not being quite right in the world that we're living in. A while back, I made a video about walking away from my financial advising career. The response was eye-opening. So many of you shared your own stories, your struggles, your successes, your hardships, and it got me to thinking about this concept called moral injury. Moral injury is what happens when we're forced to do things that go against our values, our sense of right and wrong. And in today's world, in our jobs, in our systems, it's happening a lot. You see, here's the thing. They don't care about you. The politicians, the big companies, the system, they just don't. And I know that sounds harsh, but hear me out. Think about it. How many times have you heard about a company laying off thousands of workers right after posting record profits? Or politicians, right, in this election season, politicians making promises they never intend to keep or outright lying. It's like we're all just numbers on a spreadsheet to them. But here's where it does get interesting. This lack of care, this indifference is doing something to us. It's making us feel isolated, disconnected, we're losing what little sense of community that we may have had is going away. You know, there are communities out there that still prioritize connection and care for their members, but it's, it's not about belonging to any specific group or belief system. It's about finding common principles that unite us. These principles do not have to be complicated. They're about giving first, caring for each other, being willing to go without so someone else can have what they really need. It's about adopting a mindset of service and focused on love and compassion rather than power or control over. In these communities, people slow down. They make time for connection and for care. They understand that true wealth, our ability to follow our passions and the work that and the value that we create in the world and the depth of our compassion is what really matters. But in our fast paced individualistic society, we've turned away from that. We've bought into this idea that we're all on our own, that success means every person for themselves. And that's the real tragedy here. Because when we lose our connection to each other, when we feel like no one cares, that's when we start to lose ourselves. We forget what it means to be part of something bigger, to be truly cared for. And that is a tragedy because when we lose our connection to each other, it gets really lonely. It feels like we don't have something that's important to us as humans. Connection, belonging, believing that we truly matter. So there's a story that I think captures what we're talking about here. It's about a poor woman, a um, Buddha, and the power of caring for others. And it's really touched my heart. And it brings me back to these concepts of what truly matters in life. One day there was this poor young woman. She had been trying to gather food and she keeps noticing every day her food would disappear. One day she catches the mouse that's been stealing from her and she asks, the mouse, why are you stealing from me? I'm really struggling here. Why can't you go steal from other people that are richer than me? It won't have any effect on them. Then the mouse told the woman, it is your destiny that you can only have eight items in your possession, no matter how much you beg, no matter how much you gather, because that's all you'll be able to have. The woman was shocked and said, why is that my destiny? And the mouse said, I don't know. You should go and try and ask the Buddha. So the woman goes on her journey to find the Buddha, and as she is going, it gets late, and she ends up at a wealthy family's house and asks if she can stay the night. They let her in and ask her, young woman, why are you traveling so late? And she answered, I have a question for the Buddha, and tomorrow I'll be on my way. The family then says, can we give you a question to ask the Buddha? We have an 18-year-old son who can't speak. 
We just want you to ask what we have to do so he can speak. So the young woman thanks them for the shelter, tells them, of course, that she'll ask the question for them. The next morning, she goes on her journey and sees a sea of mountains that she has to cross. She climbs up one mountain where she meets a magical priestess. The priestess decides to use her staff to take the young woman and fly them across the sea of mountains. And the, the priestess asks the young woman, where are you going? Why are you deciding to cross these mountains? The young woman said, I'm going to ask the Buddha a question about my destiny. And the priestess says, can I give you a question to ask the Buddha? I've been trying to go to heaven for a thousand years. And according to my teachings, I should be in heaven by now. Can you please ask the Buddha, what do I have to do to get into heaven? Of course, she replies, I'll ask this question for you. And as she continues on her journey, she runs into her last obstacle, which is a large river that she cannot cross. Luckily, she meets a giant turtle who decides to take them across the river. As they're crossing the, the river, the turtle asks, where are you going? She says, I'm going to see the Buddha to ask him a question about my destiny. And the turtle then says, would you ask a question for me? I've been trying to become a dragon for 500 years. According to my teachings, I should be there now. Can you please ask the Buddha, what do I have to do to become a dragon? So the young woman thanks the turtle for taking them across the river and says, of course, I'll ask your question. The young woman finally meets the Buddha. He tells everyone, I will answer three questions for everyone here, but only three questions. The young woman is shocked. She has four questions. <laughs> so she thinks carefully. She thinks about the turtle and she thinks about the priestess and she thinks about the young man and she thinks to herself that I'm just a poor beggar. I can go back home and continue begging. I'll be okay. She felt like they were more important than her own situation and the others had worked so long and really needed her help. So she asked the Buddha the three questions and the Buddha answered. The turtle is unwilling to leave the shell and as long as he is unwilling to leave the comfort of his shell, he will never become a dragon. The priestess always carries her staff and never puts it down. It acts as an anchor keeping her from heaven. And as for the young man, he'll be able to speak when he meets his soulmate. The young woman bowed to the Buddha, went on the journey back home she reunites with the turtle and explains to the turtle, he said, you just have to take off your shell and you'll become a dragon. The turtle then gets her across the river, takes off the shell, and inside the shell were priceless pearls found in the deepest part of the ocean. He gives it to the woman and tells her, thank you. I no longer need this because I'm a dragon now and flies away. The woman continues onto the mountain where she meets the priestess. And as they fly over the mountains and they settle back on the other side, she explains to the priestess that the Buddha said, all you have to do is let go of the staff and you will be able to go to heaven. It will release you from the burdens of this life. The, the priestess hands the staff to the woman and she immediately disappears into heaven. <laughs> And so the young woman now has the wealth from the turtle, the power from the priestess. She goes back to the family that gave her the shelter and tells them, the Buddha said, your son will be able to speak when he meets his soulmate. At that moment, the son comes downstairs and says, hey, is that the woman that was here last week? The young man and the woman had found their soulmate. As the woman journeyed back, helping each person she met, something amazing happened. The turtle's shell was filled with priceless jewels and the, the priestess staff held great power. And when she reached the family's home, she found her soulmate. You see, by putting others first, by caring about their problems more than her own, the woman's life was transformed. She found wealth, magical power, and love all because she chose to care. This story reminds us of something crucial. Sometimes when we're caught up in our own problems, they seem insurmountable. But when we look around and when we care about others, suddenly our issues don't seem so big. 
And that's what we've lost in our uncaring system. We've forgotten how to look beyond ourselves, how to care for our community. We've forgotten that sometimes the act of caring itself can change our destiny. So I ask you, in this world that seems not to care, can we be the ones who do? Can we be the ones who look beyond our own problems and lend a hand to others? Because maybe, just maybe, that's how we start to rebuild our sense of community and our sense of belonging. In my next video, we'll look at the real costs of staying stuck in this uncaring system. But for now, I want you to think about this story. Think about a time when you put someone else first, when you care deeply about someone else's problems. How did it make you feel? How did it change you? Because that feeling, that change, that's what we're really living for. That's what makes us human. It's not about any specific belief system or being a part of a certain group. It's about the universal principles of compassion, service, and connection that bind us all together. Bye for now.